House Bill 761 by Representative Montgomery relative to, and others relative to health insurance coverage for hearing aid for children. Chairman Montgomery, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move passage of House Bill 761 on third and final consideration. Chairman Montgomery moves passage. Property second. And Mr. Clerk, called the First Amendment. House Commerce Committee Amendment Number 1 spread on the member's desk. Chairman Lemberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This amendment creates an exemption for the 10-care program. I move to adopt. Chairman Lemberg moves adoption of Amendment Number 1, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of Amendment Number 1 say aye. Those opposed vote say no. You adopt. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. House, House Commerce Committee Amendment Number 2 spread on the member's desk. Chairman Lemberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This amendment deletes provisions from the bill that allowed coverage before the end of the three-year period if the children, child's hearing became significantly worse. Move to adopt. Chairman Lundberg moves adoption of Amendment Number 2, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of Amendment Number 2 say aye. All those opposed say no. You adopt. Next amendment, Mr. Clerk. No further amendments, Madam Speaker. Chairman Montgomery, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, First of all, let me thank the many, many legislators in this room that has helped me with this piece of legislation on both sides of the aisle. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the insurance agencies that have worked on this for numerous hours just to, uh, to make sure that uh, they understood what the, uh, what the cost of this is going to be. Uh, they, it is, it is uh, very, very much uh, uh, calculated, and they know exactly it may raise an insurance policy two pennies at, at, at most. Uh, so uh, I, I do know that there was a letter uh, sent out today by the NFIB, and Mr. Brown's doing his job, and he's a very good man. He does a good, a good job, but I, but I don't consider this a mandate. I consider this a humane, right thing to do piece of legislation for children. I just wish, I just wish that those children could have stayed in here that was here in the balcony a minute ago and let you look in their eyes and how many of them up there maybe needed hearing protection or hearing aids where they could actually hear what we're saying here today. You know, last, it's been two or three years ago, I guess now, we stood in this well and we passed legislation to make sure every infant was tested. That was passed 100%. Everybody in this Legislative body voted on that because we know what the, how critical it is for a child to be able to hear and in order to be able to learn to talk, to, to, to learn. And, and an infant to, up to third or fourth grade, their little minds are like sponges. And that's when they learn, that's when they learn the most. If they can't hear, they can't do that. And we're talking about, and we're not talking about giving anything away up here today. All we're talking about is making sure that insurance policy has that coverage of a hearing aid when a child needs help. That parent is going to pay for that insurance policy. They're going to pay their premium. We're not asking them to give anything. But let me tell you something. If anybody's ever had a child, and I have, wears two hearing aids, $6,000 out of the pocket. How many families out here in your district can go out Every two or three years, and for, I mean, lay down six thousand dollars for hearing aids. When a child, maybe they can hear a little bit, but they need help to be able to hear clearly. How many people can do that? I'm telling you, I get. I, they say they're going to grade me on this piece of legislation. I've got sixty-two thousand people back home that grade me, mamas and daddies and children. And I can guarantee you, if I went to every one of my businesses back in Sevier County, and I said, here's what we're doing, here, and, and this is what, and the impact it's going to have on children, I, they would all sign off on this piece of legislation. I can guarantee you they would. So I'm, I'm just saying that I don't consider this a mandate. And, and, and with that, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Representative Sargent, he's worked hard on this too, if he might have a comment. Representative Sargent. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, as you know, I probably fight more mandates than anything. This is an a area I think Chairman Montgomery explained it very well. This small amount of money is going to be able to be consumed in the, pre in the premiums. This is not something that's going to cost a rate increase, 
Everyone out was going out saying this is going to cost a rate increase and everything of this nature. You know, when, when you look at insurance, the, I think the fiscal note was like $41,000. Now, $41,000 to Blue Cross Blue Shields, and that's only one company, is a drop in the bucket. It'd be like a big PNC company paying for a towing bill. It doesn't change the rate if you have a towing claim. So don't consider this as, as, a, as a mandate that's going to cost your clients money because that is not going to happen. This would be absorbed right in the regular premium process. They'd be able to pay the claims. We put caps on this so it didn't become an outrageous uh, benefit. We put caps on it. A child will only be able to get a hearing aid one every three years. It goes up to age 18, so you figure that'd be six hearing aids. And a lot of times, the most expensive part of the hearing aid is not the actual piece that you wear around your ear. So a lot of times, if a child's three years old and gets fitted for one, he's six years old, the intelligence of the hearing aid he can keep. They may have to make a new ear piece, but the intelligence of the hearing aid they can keep. So this will keep a child in a hearing aid, fit it correctly, up to age 18. Folks, I appreciate your support on this. A uh, number of people have worked hard on that, and uh, thank you very much. Chairman Montgomery. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, I think there may be some people out here wanting. Uh, you, you renew your motion? The chairman renews his motion. Any discussion on the bill? Speaker Williams. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? I yield. Chairman Montgomery, this is one of the best pieces of legislation I've seen in my five years. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it and all those that have signed on to the bill, the sponsors. Uh, after reading the bill, there is one concern I have. Uh, this will only affect new policies that are written January 2012 after. Is that correct? That's my, Jimmy. I, I can't answer that. I believe that's the way I read the bill. It says it only affects policy, new policies. Uh, and if if that being the case, the the problem I have with that is we have existing children and infants out there that need these devices, and uh, they're still not going to be able to uh, uh, to get them. Am, am I correct? Well, I, I think, uh, of course, you, you renew your policy every year. And, uh, you know, and if, and if this is something that they're going to provide coverage for, then you could pick that up on an annual basis. So, so that, that will be a new policy then when you renew. I thought it was just renewing an existing policy. Maybe is Charles. Uh... Chairman Sargent. It's, it's, thank you, Madam Speaker. It says issued and or, or renewal of a policy. Or renewal. Okay, so it thank you. It would go into a, you know, if you had thank a renewal that, date of March, it would go in effect in March. That, that takes care of my concerns. And uh, the other thing I want to talk about, and the chairman already touched on it, was uh, I'm sure everyone got this email from NFIB, which would please vote no on House Bill 761 which would mandate that group and individual insurance policies cover hearing aids for dependent children. They're entitled to their opinion, of course. I've been a small business man most of my adult life, and I'll bet you can't find in my district one businessman that would be opposed to this legislation. But what really disturbs me is NFIB may use this vote as a key vote for our 2011-2012 voting record. That really bothers me. That bothers me. Our lobbyist special interest groups, they, they do a good service for us as legislators. They inform us of how legislation is going to affect their businesses, their groups. But to send me an email or to sit in my office and say, if you vote against or for this bill, we're going to give you a bad score. You know, I really don't give a, I really don't care 
what kind of score that any of these special interest groups give me, and I don't think any of these members care. This is not Washington, D.C. Special interests and lobbyists don't run the state of Tennessee like they do our federal government. And as long as we have members like we have now, that's never going to happen. So I'm appalled that any special interest or lobbyist will try to tell us how to vote on any issue. I'm more interested in the grade I get from my constituents and the people in the state of Tennessee and the families that have these children that I can't hear. What's what? We cannot let big business, special interests, dictate government in the state of Tennessee. And I applaud all the members in here because I know we won't let that happen. Thank you. Representative Lundberg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The sponsor yield? I yield. Uh, sponsor, you said this is, you don't feel this is a mandate, but candidly, it still is. That's, that's your opinion. I, I don't feel like it is. Are we mandating that this be covered? We're, we're asking, we're, we're, the insurance companies are going to put it on their policies. And I appreciate this, Bill. I've, as you know, I've had trouble with it. In my district, I had a letter from a family who talked about their six-year-old. And what they said was, this six-year-old, all they wanted for Christmas was a new pair of hearing aids. And that's tough uh, for me because I empathize and, and what you're doing and why I agree with. On the other side, Representative Weaver, just a few weeks ago, eloquently stood up and talked about the Health Care Freedom Act and talked about how it is not our place to create mandates. You talked about choice. You talked about freedom individually. And now we do it on a business committee. But right now, we don't mandate dental care. We don't mandate eye care. We have specifically in this legislation, as it's before us, exempted 10 care from it. So we as state government don't have to take part. They're already doing it. But as a, and most private insurance companies are already doing that. Yeah. And I know it's not a, it's not a lot of cost. It's $48,000. But what I'd ask the sponsor, because I need to know and for myself, is where is the line that we draw? Where is the line that we draw on, on what's a good mandate and what's, what's not? You know, as you know, and, uh, and uh, you've been here a number of years now, and it's very hard to get a, a mandate passed down here because we, we don't support mandates. And it's going to cause, uh, cause a, a, a real burden on a business or, or, on, or on a family. We, we, don't, we don't support that. But this, is, this, this is what we're talking about with this. We, we were able to know what the cap was. We, we were able to know what the cost was going to be and how it was going to calculate into the policy. I mean, all this was calculated out before we ever did this. It's not like we went in blind and said, we're going to pass a mandate, and I don't know what it's going to cost, uh, you know, the people. So we, we tried to be very, very careful to, that, that it was, we, we were hitting the target that we were after. And I understand that, and, and, and I respect... Uh the representative from Carter County who talked before about NFIB, and I have not had vast discussions there. I do have this feeling, though, as a small business person, I currently own three companies, and we provide one hundred. We did provide a hundred percent of health insurance for our employees. A couple of years ago, we went to eighty percent, and or one of our companies has been in existence eighteen years. I consider it personally. Um, one of the saddest things I had to do when I dropped that down to 80% because I think that's important. I think this becomes a slow erosion of what we do and what we pass on to businesses because it's inevitable. This didn't cost a lot. It won't. Sometime in the future, I'm going to have to cut that back. And somebody's going to go at some point, one of my employees is going to go, you know, I can't afford the 40% for my health care. And we're going to pull that out. And we've exempted 10 care because they do it, but we also exempted 10 care because if this becomes so expensive in the future, they can pull themselves out. What we're doing is not going to let anyone else come out. We're going to mandate that. And, I, and again, Representative Chairman, I have the utmost respect for you, and I understand, and it's difficult for me because, as I told you, that letter that I came uh, from my district 
came not long ago, and as all of us know up here, it's very difficult when you get those stories from someone in your district to look them in the eye and say, I can't support you because of this. But I also think that we were sent up here and we talk about all the other mandates that are coming out, and then we go, but this one's okay. I don't know where to draw the line. And when I come up here, and I think the folks have sent all of us up here to set policy, I've got to say, I can't do this. And to the sponsor, thank you. Uh, Representative, Madam Speaker, uh, thank you. Representative Lundberg, let me say I appreciate your comments. I, really, I truly do, because you've got a perspective there that I, we, we needed to hear, and I, I appreciate that. Let me just mention one other, one other situation that, that really hadn't been spoke of today. Can you imagine if a child does not have a hearing aid, a hearing aid they cannot hear, where are they going to end up? They're going to end up in special education. Now, how much is that going to cost our, our education system? You know, it's, it's, this is absolutely preventive. Preventive medicine is what this is, and, and to really help, help children. So I just wanted to bring that point to you.